you're probably gonna see some form of a surprise or another, right? So with that being said, here we go. Jumping into game one draft here. AP Brennan homeboys. One of the teams have to go home, you know? And it starts here in this best of three game one. AP Bren will have that priority, that first pick, what they're gonna be going for. And I wouldn't be surprised unless it's banned out, Kim. Guinevere is probably gonna pop up, you know, uh, possibly mm -hmm. for the first pick. Um, we'll see if one of the teams actually want to go that route and just kind of ban some of these heroes that we've been seeing constantly picked up in the first phase. Oh, wow. AP Bryn uh, most immediately takes away the uh, Faramis. Yeah. I think this kind of goes to show that uh, AP Bryn might kind of go for that like massive chain CC type of composition and the Faramis is uh, kind of the one sustaining in the clash, something that Udil has also picked up like even before. Matilda's still not going to be um, open here. I think that's one of the top band or let's say it's open. Actually, there was a time, yeah, it was open for AP Bryn to take. That was also the matchup with Homeboys where, you know, old when got into Matilda, it was the MVP, not a single mm -hmm. death, and he actually built the Matilda to be like a magic damage Matilda, like Holy Crystal, Blood Wings, that kind of light up. So that was pretty interesting coming out from their side, and it worked really well for them. That's what I like to call the big damn Matilda, you know? Like, you, you just build it that way, <laughs> and it's got the damage. And uh, it's a threat because actually the way her kit works, it's, it, it has good poke potential, and then you build it that way, it gets scary. Right, so um, it's a good ban. I mean, obviously, even without that, like Matilda's constantly banned out just because of how strong she is. Um, Nolan also being taken out of the picture here. We know that AP Ren loves that pick if they want to go that route. We'll see, though, know, once again, even with this, this is still leaving some of those other heroes that are picked up often yeah. in the first phase. Joy is still open, that's still available. Of course, yeah. you still have the rubies available. Um, you still have Nana, of course, that has been in high contention yeah. for a lot of the different teams here. So even ban-wise, this is a little bit different. Like typically, yeah, mm -hmm. are a lot. Oh, there, that's a surprise. Yeah that they, uh, AP Actually, Brand's the one to just be like, you know what, take out Twi take out Guinevere. So this first phase of the bands from AP Brand already is a little bit of a different pattern than what we've been seeing so far. Yeah, I was gonna actually point out, like I was curious why AP Brand banned away that Arlot. Like most of the time, even all the way back to the group stages, this is what they would prioritize, especially when they're on the blue side. So this kind of goes yeah. to show that AP Brand kind of wants to bring out something different also this time and as for homeboys there's a lot to take in here <laughs> i mean yes you're gonna be the last one to ban out a hero but also at the same that it can kind of like leave you out in the open what do i ban out i was gonna uh, i was actually thinking of the joy that ap brand could pick up it's gonna be taken out here but if ap brand kind of wants to go the safer route like they pick up a ruby here which is pretty pretty much standard for for everybody here in the tournament very safe yeah. pick flexible guinevere's also out so they can actually kind of start it up with that but something that few is also pretty comfortable with a vision is also pretty important the pokes and the back line they got the navaria uh, for themselves, which is actually pretty good since Homeboys' is Udil actually loves to pick up this hero. So it's kind of like a, a deny away here from the side of AP Brand, which means Homeboys can kind of go for, uh, okay, <laughs> so if they don't have the Novaria, yeah. like, why not just get a hero that can copy it? Valentina, which is a rising pick, a solid pick up here so far uh, in the meta, knowing that there's a lot of good ultimates that really can be picked up here by the Valentina. They can also go for um, I'm looking at what else is available here. CC is also available, but the Ruby is going to be locked in instead here by the side of the homeboys. Mm, okay, if, CC, if they go, if they do pick up the CC here, I think that could obviously work in their favor. But so far, the fact that you have the Navaria, Valentina, it's funny too, because Valentina, like, um, so far, at least from other teams too, it's still not one of those like pickups that gets taken right away. But I like that homeboys did it. They um, they go with it here. The the rubies paired up really well. Uh, I'm not sure though. Like AP Brand, knowing that a Valentina's already locked in this early on, it's like, hmm, how do you want to play around this? What ultimates, you know, do you want to give yeah. over to you know to homeboys? You know why the Valentina's still pretty good right now, even despite the fact that she was released back in november 2021 okay and even up until mm -hmm. now come on somebody give this girl a break she's been staying on the ban list or the top pick list it's all because of like um it really limits out what the opponent can bring out right like once the valentine is out you kind of have to double think like okay 
I can't pick up these heroes that have really good ultimates. The Valentina can pick it up. But right now, but if you give them like so much CC here or so much crowd control for the side of AP Bren, Udil might actually have a hard time picking up the ultimates. They lock in the Brody here and the Fredrin as well, which is something that Kaltizi is known for doing or known for picking up, even in the M5. Yeah. Um, and with that too, the fact that, you know, they, the Novaria paired with the Brody, this is a very, again, all these picks at this point are kind of like signature picks so far. Nothing out of the, nothing out of the box yeah. for AP Brand <laughs> anyway right now, right? <laughs> like, we have seen this so often, um, and at the same time, it's making me wonder, like, even with the Brody being here, like, already Brody, Novaria, what you're automatically thinking is, all right, range. These guys got range. We have to deal with that range. If we're homeboys, like, how are we approaching this range? Well, for them, it's like, well, we do have a Valentina, which depends on what ultimate we can take here. We've got a Ruby. So already our responsibility for the Ruby is like, we have to make the play. Like, we have to be able to, if you're a Zorn, you have to be able to flicker in and get the I'm offended. The problem is, if you don't get it, you know, it, it's gonna yeah. be tough. You're gonna be out of position. You're gonna get punished. And so, you know, even with that being said, you still have to round out this Ruby pick for homeboys to allow yourself to do that. Now, the traditional matchup we see here in the gold lane as well, when there's a Brody across from you is most likely teams like to opt for the Bruno. It's Bruno Brody, Bruno Brody, right? That is also just because it's a little bit safer. You just try to farm up, get those two items, have an impact because you know you're gonna be fighting against Brody fighting from afar. And you have to also be safe enough to deal from the vision provided from Novaria, right? Yeah. So we'll see exactly how that goes. We have a couple more bands left here, but you can see the focus as well on the XP lane, right? And uh, depending on where that kind of unfolds, um, that's also gonna be a big question. What do they park in the XP lane? Yeah, they're taking away like the, I wouldn't say signature picks, but at this point, they're, they're limiting out the uh, XP lane, which is also very crucial uh, in the early game, which you've seen a lot of the teams do. Like instead of uh, going to mm -hmm. their usual rotation in the gold lane, they kind of pressure out the XP lane. So you kind of need that uh, solid or, or that stable type of XP lane that, that can sustain you up until it reaches the point that you can get to that level four, help out in the turtle. Um, that's going to be the X board taken out here for homeboys as their final ban. I think they're limiting out uh, a flap TZ here in terms of the hero pool and for AP Bren. They could take away the Bruno here or they could take away more XP laners. CC is also out here, so that means it's going to be more focused on the XP lane. And I like this man coming out mm -hmm. from the side of AP Bren too. This uh, CC can really, really reach the back lines here. As you were talking about that, the uh, homeboy still needs someone to kind of uh, disrupt like the Brody and the Navaria that has the range here for their side. Okay, and with that, you know, fighting, concerning about range here, the Lapu Lapu being picked up, that's kind of what I was thinking is like, what, what options would be available in the XP lane considering there's so many that's been banned out, you know, uh, for the most part. Lapu Lapu is probably one of the safer options you could kind of just go for, for homeboy. But like with this lineup, this is this is not out of the box as I was saying, but it, you know, in a way it's like, you have to approach this ranged game that AP Bren is going to have with this, you know? And you kind of got to cover that base here for the most part because playing against, or playing out of the box and then against the the fact that you're going to be getting spotted out with vision is troublesome. And then Fovius is si yeah, still like Fovius. signature pick for AP Bren. Nothing crazy, nothing yeah. new for AP Bren, right? <laughs> like this is something they like to do. And now they have a Minotaur. So there's a lot here, a lot here that Homeboys kind of has to tackle. We'll see what this last pick's going to yeah. be. What, anything off the top of your head for that gold lane? Oh man, like th does the next Nets kind of go for like the Herod that can go like head to head with the Brody from the start or maybe like go for like a safer choice like uh, you know, the Brody that you've been mentioning earlier that is actually open here for, for their side to take or maybe go for something completely different. The Claude I think is still open. That is actually pretty good here with the tanky picks, but the there's a there's a phobias here that they have to deal with. They're gonna be locking in the Claude for the last pick here for the homeboys, which yep. I think is a direct answer to the tanky front line that the side of AP Bren has. But I'm just a little bit mm -hmm. worried that uh, there is gonna be the demonic force here coming out from the side of AP Bren, which is not gonna make it easy for the Claude. Yeah, and uh, that's the that's. 
I feel like the name of game, the name of the game once again is like dealing with this pressure of range. And now that you have a Phobius who's like the counter of that, like he's all in your face. You know what I mean? Like that's his job. So it's like, yeah. For homeboys, I feel like the biggest uh, issue they have to solve here in game one is like, how do we protect what we need to as we approach the game, but then dealing with getting in, in range because it's already hard enough to catch a Novaria, you know what I mean? And when it when it's when it's just kind of sieging down your lineup, uh, especially yeah. when it comes to these objectives, where what I was saying, Kim, earlier, like we'll probably see this happen and unfold. Like, pay attention to this. The timing that I've been talking about from AP Bren, um, I'm not. I, I wouldn't expect it to change so much because they had it down to a T. And leading into that first Lord is probably going to be very crucial for them, even with this lineup. So, you know, with that being said, we're jumping in here into the land of dawn. Game number one in this second match of the day, AP Bren and Homeboy. So, Gwen though, taking some damage already. Yeah, this is classic moves from the side of uh, homeboys. Uh, what they do actually in the early game is make sure that they poke, let's say in the mid or even the gold, make sure that they poke them heavily so that they can go back and kind of recharge and reset before like objectives. And even Zorn here um, being super, super aggressive here up against AP Brand, which is something that they actually managed to do even in the group stages. And so far, we haven't seen any of these like... Uh, any any early game takedowns so far, but it's a matter of like pokes from both sides. Hmm, and you know, with that, I like the fact too that homeboys dealing with the poke, if they want to, dealing with the range, they at least have a couple options to get out, right? Like the purifies are there. Nets is definitely gonna need it. He's gonna have to kind of break some ankles here too, Kim. Okay? I mean, like he's gotta have the timing <laughs> on the BMI on point, which, you know, again, he's he's done many times. He's obviously uh, he's gone through the ropes here, right? Obviously, in the Philippines. So nothing new for him. But for the rest of the team, they kind of got to give Nets a, enough time to build up to where he needs to be. So that leaves that leaves it up to Adil and the rest of the team, you know, to, to be able to scale up, to be able to hold the grounds down throughout this portion of the game. And now that this subjective is going to be up here, you're going to see it kind of unfold as both teams really yeah. try to get that level four available and work around this. But you can already see the positioning happening here. Kyle Teasy will go ahead and start with the turtle, but it's spotted out, right? Chibi's just around the corner for here, so they're gonna go ahead and go with this turtle dance first portion of this game. Mm -hmm. Flaps Teasy already here. Oh, Deal got in that uh, demonic force as well. It's gonna be Flaps Teasy starting it up. Turtle already at one fourth HP. It's gonna be Chibi picking it up for the side of Homeboys. There's the appraiser's Ooh. rat from Kyle TZ. Sword gonna be able to get out, but it still goes on. Flap TZ gonna be able to pop in that demonic force and lock it out the first time. There's still not gonna be any casualties just yet, but AP Brent, or rather the side of Homeboys, starting it off real strong by picking up that first turtle of the game. Yeah, it's good they get that, right? I mean, at least they, they're able to pull through with that. No one goes down, so no first blood just yet. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to kind of see these rotations happen now from homeboys because with uh, a little bit of this, you know, it's like a baby step, honestly, at this point. But that's what I was saying. They, If they can secure the first turtles of the game, maybe even all three, that gives them this minor advantage where they really have to uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with AP Bren into that first yeah. lord. And even with that, right now, look how aggressive they are on this side of the jungle of AP Brent. Yeah, uh, Kyle TZ going to be soaking up the damage. Uh, not going to go for the full commit. Look at Chibi here. He's actually two levels ahead of Kyle TZ here. And this is exactly what you need to do, right? If you're a Martis, that is so good in the early game. And if you're talking about the yeah. light switch, this Martis also kind of has that light switch, right? Once it reaches mid to late game, it's already at par with everybody. It's fine. It does not have that uh, kind of early game uh, snowball, I'd say, uh, once it reaches that mid to late game. So they have to watch out for that here to homeboys. And they got to capitalize this early game that they have. Yeah, we'll see how they play around that once again. 30 seconds away from this turtle. AP Bren, though, are they going to get caught mm -hmm. out here? Uh-huh. Kyle TZ forced to use a retribution, and that's going to be Sepat picking up the first blood. Here comes Pat TZ to the oh. rescue by taking a lot of damage. That's Chibi. Going to go in for that decimate and take him down. Homeboy starting it off real strong here. And this is what they have done up against AP Bren in the group stage. Just pressure out the XP lane. And if you notice it, like, they're just letting that gold lane side. Let's take a look at the instant replay here. Yeah, so as it all unfolded, once again, you know, it's just 
the scaling that's been in favor right now of homeboys, the fact, too, like you pointed it out, the Martis has been just farming up, doing well, and that's another turtle now taken as well. So the pace, the tone, it's homeboys so far, and uh, it's AP Bren finding themselves 3,000 gold behind, and this is quite, you know, uh, not what people are used to seeing from AP Bren right now. It's homeboys just kind of giving it to them, and so with that, if they can keep the gas going without getting too reckless, that's where homeboys has to keep it together. This is that play style we were talking about earlier, you know, from the from the Malaysian region, really kind of paying dividends here. And, and meanwhile, Nets has just been able to farm up. That's the best yeah. case scenario for him, for him, you know? Have that gold lane experience. Hold on, they're gonna go for it again. Mm -hmm. Flapsies is going to be starting up. There is going to be the demonic force, but he's taking up too much damage. Kalti's and the rest of the gang forced to back away. Not going to go for more. And that's going to be AP Bren backing it away safe and sound. 3-0 right now. And so far, homeboys are leading. Looking at the the, the advantage too. GB is uh, levels ahead here of uh, against Kyle TZ, who's just level 7. He's already level 10 here. Interesting choice of Emblem too here, Nice. I think this is one of the first few times I actually have seen this uh, impure rage on a Martis. Usually, like, you'd go for uh, a quantum charge. Uh, how is this different from the quantum charge here, uh, Naisu? Uh, I thought you were about to call me uh, Kuya Naisu. <laughs> But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the impure rage for the mart is, you know, I think you know, like either way, you can be very flexible with these emblems. And of course, I don't think we actually get a glimpse of, you know, the tier one and tier two, what they're rolling with, but um, it works, right? And for the most part, it just, it's a little bit of that extra damage. And then of course you can roll around with uh, the scaling as well that comes with it. And it's kind of debatable. Some, some players, they like to go, even with the assassin emblems, like some of them still go with that, you know, and they can work around it. But right now, whether it's quantum charge, whether it's um, this impure rage, he's making it work. And that's what counts for Chibi because he's doing it against a very renowned jungler and team. So now third turtle's gonna be up here. They're gonna get in position for this one as they break through deal, holding on to the demonic force himself. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that we've seen, classic. Moose going out from homeboys. I've seen this in the group stage where Laptizi and Odile were kind of going at it. Turtle's going to be reset here. Odile taking a okay. lot of the damage, though, coming out from a uh, few. Let's yep. see. I, so I think they're ahead. just kind of... Uh-huh. It's going to be Kaltizi. Okay, they're going to go for Zornir. Oh. Flickers out. Odile's going to be the first target here. Nice setup there coming out from the Minotaur. It's going to be Kaltizi picking up that turtle. They're still going to go for more here. Kaltizi's going to get it taken down by Chibi. Getting shut down oh, no. there by Super Marco, who's kind of free hitting everyone, getting in that double kill. Two kills for the gold laner of AP Bread. Yeah, did I just say it, Burger Kim? You can't get too reckless. Pressing on the gas mm -hmm. here, homeboy was, but it just, it, it, this is the punishment I'm talking about, right? Yes, they're still ahead. They're holding on to a lead. That's great but they can't let that happen again. And the fact too, <clears throat> that Super Marco got those two kills and now he's got the two items he needs. He's got the blade, he's got the malefic roar. He's gonna be a threat. He's gonna be uh, kind of tough to deal with because right now, Few is still building up, right? He's not where he needs to be on the Novaria just yet. He's trying to scrap up a little bit more gold to get to the items that he needs. And also a DHS being picked up by Super Marco. So now he's got the three. That was a huge, kind of power spike in this last minute that he just went through. And this is what I'm talking about, where this usually happens <clears throat> in the case before that first Lord coming up. So in under a minute, it's gonna be there. And Super Marco, if he is not taken care of, if he's not focused down, he's gonna be a threat to the homeboys. So they just gotta keep it together right now. The lead they have, work around it, try to get some turrets if they can. But you can see this. That's exactly why Ogwin, uh -huh. for the most part, will just kind of plan himself around here from Super Marco. So, homeboys, they want to make a rotation down bot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ogwin here has a flicker. It's going to be Udil taking a lot of the damage. Oh. Torn apart memories. Is it enough? It's gonna... As it takes out Udil from the backside, Sepat's still going to be going for it. Appraiser's Rat there being popped in by Kyle TZ. Knock up from the backside. So Pat's gonna get taken down, but Flap TZ still gonna go for it. Demonic Force is still up as Chibi and the rest oh. of the homeboys are gonna be running away from it. There's gonna be Astral Echo too from Few. Everybody's real low, but they won't be committing. 
for more as AP Brand going to be setting themselves up against this Lord. This should be a free Lord here for the side of AP Brand. Kim, Homeboys are chunked down to half. Did I not say that before the first that, Lord? There switch. is a play. <laughs> there is a there is yep. a play that AP Brand does. And this time it wasn't even on their will. It was Homeboys that tried to make the play in the bottom side. But Owen knew that that would probably happen with the pressure they were putting on that turret. They see it coming, and they fight. And Super Marco, like I said, he had the three items he needed. It didn't matter. Udil took a couple hits, got marked up, and then torn apart, right? Like, that's the that's what happened. And now the First Lord is secured. I've been talking about this for months now, that AP brand, this is their timing. This is what they like to do. And this has now garnered themselves to a point where it's even, economy-wise. But still, Super Marco is huge, and he just picked up a Wind of Nature. So that gets a little bit more dicey for homeboys because... One, it's like, how do we get to him? And Few is also building up really well now at this point. Another turret's gonna fall here. So huge space advantage now for AP Bren to work around with. Yes, it's only one turret against homeboys, but the power play that they're having right now is huge in comparison to the past couple minutes. Oh. Rose Cook Meteor has been picked up too here by Sepat. I'm thinking about what the homeboys needs to do at this point exactly. Definitely the shutdown on Super Marco will be big. The shutdown goal is going to have to be there. But at the same time, like uh, AP Brand has already taken back the space that they've that homeboys has been taken in for the first few games. And, and so far, like at this point, right, who are you going to burst down? Flap TZ, Cal TZ, all these players already have items that they need. And at this point, like Super Marco can also sustain whatever homeboys is going to be throwing out since he already has the wind of nature like what you pointed out so it's either up to nets who has been quietly farming actually so far for the side of homeboys yeah. but hasn't been able to pop any of those blazing duets yet well i would say like nets is still in a good position to have you know some impact here as we get in further into this game and that is something that ap brand knows very well uh it's something that Super Marco himself, when he's on the claw, does. And you can see it. Nets is already putting the pressure there. And AP Bren yeah. is going to respond exactly to that, right? So this is something we're familiar with. It's, it's almost like a, a game of cat and mouse. Like, they have to be able to answer the pressure on these side lanes. AP Bren, even with the minor lead that they have in space, they still have to manage it, right? Because it can quickly... Uh, go in favor of homeboys here if they're able to pull down some of this pressure. And that's why also you see Sapat putting uh, himself there in the bottom lane, right? So the rest of this, it's kind of like homeboys, they have to flip the mindset of, all right, let's protect Nets as much as possible. Let's keep him alive. Let's do, let, let him do what he needs to do. He does have that purify. He's got some of the items that he needs now in this clod. He should be scaled up really well. Look at this, like taking a look at the items here on point he's where he needs to be still building up most likely that wind of nature next grabs it as soon as i say so now he's got it that's great now he's matched up he's still a little bit behind in terms of gold but he's well matched up against super marco now that this next lord is up here homeboys is actually in a good position if they can pull this yeah. off even possibly with a concealed play from yep. zorn if they want to go that route it could happen. You can see them. They're actually putting pressure in the space around this Lord already. And AP Bren has to respect it. They know exactly that. Nets is going to work on this mm -hmm. turret. He's got to make sure he's fine. BMI's back. So still the push and pull here for the, the second Lord as both teams work on it. The shots, yeah. though, coming out from few. Uh -huh. They're going to have to be careful about right. that. Not going to be any ultimates invested just cool. yet. Just going to be coming out from few just for Division Gaming. Uh, Lord's gonna be reset here. Appraiser's Strat onto a deal. Woohoo! Taking a lot of the damage there. Nobody's fully committing to all of these clashes, knowing that there's also pressures on the sides. But AP Bren might actually want to close this out by uh, taking this Lord Ogwen, going in wow. for that setup there. Turtle, or rather Lord though, 1 fourth HP here. One more HP. Let's see if Kalteezy oh. can be able to take it with the Retribution. Storm's gonna go down here. Super Marco still free hitting everyone though. And AP Brent might actually just reset there and actually take their time to pressure the side of Homeboys here. But, you know, Homeboys, I like the attempt. There was some uh, there was some light there. They actually could have made some plays. But now AP Brent, this is where they're good at. They're going to be pressuring this mid tower. Second tier already down. Only the inhibitors left here. Oh, that's tough. Again, still going to be fighting it out. Chibi going to try to keep them at bay here. Nets as well with the rest of the team. They still have a little bit longer for Zorn to be up. Couple seconds here. They should be full forced. 
of course, by this uh, time that AP Brand gets ready for this assault. So most likely, again, like we just saw from that last exchange, it was just, it was, they, they approached it very well. Homeboys for a little bit looked like they had some control and then AP Brand punished them. And it's still Super Marco having a massive game. So now Lord's here, it's gonna go ahead and charge in. Mm -hmm. It's been knocking at the doors of uh, Homeboys. Look at the damage too coming out from few from the backside, poking everyone before they shred this Lord. AP Brand could actually go for the pressure here. Pressure in all of the lanes. Knowing that Few oh. is just at the backside to cover, Kyle T's going to be jumping in, soaking up all of the damage. Flap TZ not going to be investing that demonic force just yet. There's a tug from Zorn, but it's not going to do much as AP Bren just going to be backing away from that one. Yeah, they don't have to find it. I mean, for the most part, AP Bren, they're very objective-based right now. That's what they're thinking. They get the two turrets. They're most likely going to get this third, too. It's only a couple hits away. And still, they might put the pressure to actually force the situation mm -hmm. if they want to. Chibi already oh, taking a couple wow. shots on the marks here. Uh huh. Yeah, a lot of damage coming out from Super Marco. Sepa trying to go for the backside. Goes for Bravest Spider, but he gets spotted here by Super Marco and the rest of the gang. Soren, Flap TZ just zoning everyone and still not getting taken down. Demonic Force is still up as he goes for more here. Minion Waves are also crashing in here for the side of uh, AP Bren. They might actually just go for the finish, but there's just a lot of heroes still up here for the side of Homeboys. They might actually just reset here and try to go in for the next Lord. Okay, they take the discipline route, they back off. Sapat was the only one that went down, and you know I know we didn't get a good look at it, but there was a you know, relatively a good mm -hmm. effort from Homeboys there, and it kind of split off also the team, AP Bren, from really trying to like win that fight through and it's super marco he still did not go down but uh overall you know few was able to be very elusive and he hasn't died and that's why the novaria is so strong with the way that her kit works and super marco mm -hmm. so it's like homeboys you know your biggest thing is like how do we find a pickoff how do we actually get one of these targets locked in and you know at this point too nets has the items that he needs it's not really much of an itemization thing it's like how do we actually execute this and pull it off and that might come down to just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with these Lord fights, right? Like, the next one is now up. We're nearly at the 17-minute mark. Homeboys has the items they need. It's like they just yeah. have to win this dance, and that's what they're going to get prepped and ready for. But Ogwin also waiting yeah. patiently there in the bush. Udil holding on to his own demonic force. Yep. We'll see how they approach it. Lord going to be half health here. Super Marco also double buffed up. This is very crucial on how Homeboys tries to get in position here. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if they're even going to be able to right now. Flap They're TZ trying also to, though. There. Yeah, they have to. Mm -hmm. So Chibi waiting patiently. He's done this uh -huh. multiple times. Oh, there. Okay. Goes in. Uh huh. There's going to be uh, the pokes there coming out from a uh, few, actually causing this, the rest of the homos to actually back away. So one wipeout can actually take them down. They don't have any inhibitors left, and that's going to be AP Bren securing in. I believe the second Lord of the game actually here for this side. So without any inhibitors here, second. Enhanced Lord for the side of AP Bren. This can create a lot of pressure, but for the homeboys, right? They have to find that pickoff on the back lines. The only one that can actually do that at this point is yeah, Sorn with the nice setup. Or Sepat, actually. Yeah. You've seen him attempt on the on Super Marco and few. But at this point, no inhibitors left. They gotta focus on defending their base here. They have the Lord for the side of AP Bren. Yep, conceal already used here. They're gonna get spotted mm -hmm. out though. Mm -hmm. Flap TZ. He's going to be using that Demonic Force up. Going to keep it going. Look at the damage on the Chibi. Ooh. Nice setup there by Ogwen. Everyone's real low here from the side of Homeboys. Appraiser's Wrath going to take down Sword. And from the backside, they're still dealing with that Demonic Force, which is Odile. <laughs> Not going to be able to make it. It's only Nets and Chibi left to defend. The Lord is still locking in the base of Homeboys, and that's going to be it. AP Bren takes in game number one. Man, oh man. So they take game number one here in a, it took them a, you know, it took them some time, right? It took them some time to get where they needed to be. But uh, like I was saying and how it was gonna unfold, they got to that first Lord, they got the pick they were looking for, and then they kind of uh, had this kind of snowball effect from there. But homeboys, man, in the early game, for Kim, they had what they exactly needed, you know? Like they were, yeah. they were doing it in the early game. They were the ones setting the pace. They were the one making AP Bren respond to them. It's just, again, at some point, it's like, 
they they lost control yeah. here and as we take a look at the replay the highlights sorry the highlights from this game mm -hmm. you're gonna see what we're talking about now this is already seven minutes in that was the turtle fight and you can see just how strong things were for homeboys but this is where super marco just kind of he yeah. flipped his own switch he got the double here and this is where the scaling really went in the favor we've seen him play brody time and time again and when he gets these two kills two three early kill like this that's what happens he scales up really fast he's very good in positioning you know super marco as a player that's one of the things that really stands out for me on depending on whatever marksman he's playing in the gold lane his positioning is so good and the rest of the team does a great job at peeling for him when he needs to this also was just showing how strong that power spike was at this point in the game on that brody yeah it was a shutdown gold actually on on cheapy uh, at that like which is why the massive gold swing went inside of ap brand and not to mention it all went to to super marco here which is someone that really really um you want to give all those kills to and at this point like 13 minutes in there were some attempts here by uh chibi to actually take in the lord but unfortunately for the side it's gonna be a retribution battle right and it's gonna be kyle tz taking it in here for the side of uh, ap brand and once it reached the point that, um, you know, there was only the inhibitors left here uh, for the side of uh, AP Brand, what they did, right, was actually take this the safer route. Like, just go for the next Lord, not force anything too crazy here in the, the final encounters. Yeah, and so with that, again, it took them a little longer, you know, 18 minutes into this push. But you could just see at this point, like, how that positioning and how everything else was... was where they needed to be, you know? And, and it was, at this point, homeboys just a very difficult time like trying to go in with that fight and deal with that and you can see it super marco deserving of this mvp here for game number one very uh you know standard for him honestly a super marco mm -hmm. at this point on this on this hero 702 like he has done this multiple times and it's such a when it comes down to it the micro decisions that he makes within the game if you just pay attention to super marco you'll know what i'm talking about here specifically yeah. his positioning and uh you know when he just picks up the two items even on this brody that blade plus the malefic roar he's already a force to be reckoned with and then it gets to that point where the question even from the draft kim was like how do we deal with this range? How do we deal with this elusiveness is like what I like to call yeah. it because of the fact that you have a Novaria that can basically, you know, shift and phase through the, <laughs> through the map in a way. Like <laughs> that's tough enough. But then you have the Brody who works from range and then paired up with the fact that you have that Fovius, a factor of mm -hmm. a lot of teams don't actually go with the Fovius, right? Because uh, it takes a certain lineup and a certain type of player to really utilize that uh, in the best way possible. And Flap Teasy does that phenomenally. And so he's in everybody's face from homeboys. It's tough to deal with because like the whole time, it's like, it, I mean, imagine it like in a POV, you're dealing with demonic force, like this guy jumping on you everywhere. And you're trying to catch a Brody or a 